So here's our first lesson on charts, our chapter three topic in our course. Charts are relatively um, straightforward to make, but there's a lot of details that we're going to have to go through as far as individual types of formatting that you might want to do. Now for charts, there are many, many, many different types of charts. We will be taking a look at these ones down here. So a column chart, a bar chart, a pie chart, a line chart, a clustered column chart, a combo chart, and then a stacked bar chart. Now there are a couple of different ways that we can create a chart. The first thing we have to recognize is that we should have some data selected in order to create a chart. Because for example, if I go insert, use the insert tab and pick a chart, any chart that's available. If I pick one, well, I don't have any data selected, so it's gonna be just something blank. So I'll just delete that. Alternatively, if I go insert and recommended charts, we get an error message or a warning message that we have to select cells that contain the data we want to use. So ideally what we'd like to do is choose our data. So select some data. Now, preferably without the headings, because if we have the headings, then we can all be creating a, another point of data, so to speak, that we don't want to have included in our graph. You'll notice that when we select our data, if we go to the insert again and recommended charts, well now Excel comes up with some different re recommended charts that we can sort of browse through and decide which we want, which one we like or don't like. Alternatively, we could go to our all charts and you can see here there are many different types of charts listed. We're going to take a look at the column chart. And you can see again, here's the, the name, clustered column, stacked column, 100% stacked, 3D clustered, 3D stacked, 3D 100% stacked, and then 3D columns. We go to our line chart and we can see some different line charts here. And again, if we click on one, we get a preview of it below. Okay, And this is where we can you know, choose one and decide whether we like it or don't like it. We can take a look at pie charts. So those three that we're gonna be looking at. We can also take a look at bar charts. So bar charts are just the horizontal graphs. Sometimes people call um, column charts, bar charts or vertical bar charts, but Excel has different names. Column chart is the vertical bars, bar chart is the horizontal bars. We're not going to look at area or XY scatter. You might see the XY scatter in your, if you wind up taking statistics at some point in time. We don't take a look at the map or the stock, surface reference, tree map, sunburst, histogram again, and box and whisker. Those are different types of graphs that you might take a look at when you're doing your statistics courses. We also won't look at waterfall or funnel charts, but we will be taking a look at combo charts. And combo charts, you can see that it's a clustered column with a line, clustered column with a line on a secondary axis. Now nothing's coming up here because we can see here to create a combination chart, we need at least two series of data. So that's another way that we can create a chart. If we have our data selected, if we don't want to go to recommended or Go to the more charts. We can have these little sort of sub menus down here. So here's the 2D column charts and bar charts. And again, notice how I, when I hover over them, I get a little preview below it so I can decide whether that's the one I like or not. If I <clears throat> take a look at the line chart, you can see here the 2D line charts, 3D line charts. Here's the pie charts and then scatter plots. And again, this would be if we wanted to make a <clears throat> linear regression, say for statistics, there's our histogram, our tree map, which as I said, we're not gonna be taking a look at either of these. If you're into stocks, you might take a look at waterfall or funnel or stock type of charts. And we even have fancy combo charts here. Again, we can access them through these individual icons versus going through the all charts. We also have the dialog box here for seeing all charts. So again, that brings us to the recommended, and then we can just go to the tab for all charts to see all of them. There are things called pivot charts that we will see further in the course. And then there's different maps, and we won't be doing mapped, um, map type of charts in this course, but maybe at some point in the future, you're gonna wanna take a look at that. 
<clears throat> the last way that we can create a chart is that if I have my data selected, so I'm going to deselect it and reselect it, and I'm going to create, select the whole table here, we can see we have our quick analysis icon coming up again. We had seen this in our last lesson, and I've mentioned that we would be seeing it again in charts. So if we click on the quick analysis icon, we can see here, we can come to charts, and again, it will bring us to the different categories. Notice when I hover over it, that it gives a preview of the different types that are available. And if we again go to more charts, we'll go back to that same dialog box. Something else that comes up in our quick analysis icon is spark lines and spark lines. We're going to be seeing them next week or next class in charts and we'll have line column and win loss. And you can see here that as I hover over them, it's putting spark lines in my G column. So let's go ahead and take a look at the um, breakdown of all the different elements or pieces of a chart. So in my first sheet of my workbook, the JO column chart, this is just an illustration and I'm just going to minimize this up here for a minute so we can see things a little better. All the different elements or pieces of a chart. Now you're going to find that when you're working with charts and if you want to do some fancy formatting with them, you're going to have to be very careful for where your cursor is because where your cursor is will restrict or expand, depending on what it is, the different types of options we'll have available. So if I click somewhere here, and you can see as I sort of hover over it, this is my chart area. So I can click over here, that's my chart area. Down here, that's my chart area. And so here I have in the green, the chart area with sort of this outer boundary. And you can see we have the handles around the chart area. If I click in here though, and I'm just hovering right now, I haven't even clicked, well, this is my plot area. So the plot area is where your graph actually shows up. And if I click on my plot area, I see a second set of handles coming here that we can see this is where I'm highlighting. If I go back to my chart area and I double click it, I get a task pane that gives me different formatting options for that chart area. And I have a little box here or a little paint box, um, paint icon here to fill in the line, different effects, and then size and the property of my chart. If I click in the plot area, notice how the task pane updates. So now I have the formatting for the plot area. And I don't have as many icons here, but I can go back to my fill and border or my fancy effects. If I do my drop down arrow here, you can see how we can navigate between the different aspects of a chart. So if I come here to chart area, now it's changed it to chart area. If I come here and go to um, chart title, then I have my chart title highlighted. So this is another way that you can navigate. If you're not sure what you have selected, use the little drop down arrow and come and pick one of these. Additionally, if we come up here, this is the format chart title. The down arrow is not giving us anything to move it, size it, or close it. So say if we wanted to size it, we can make it bigger or smaller. I'll just escape. If I want to move it, maybe I'll move it to the bottom down here or to the left-hand side, but I'll put it back to where it was. I'm just going to close it and double click so that it comes up the same. And here we can just close it or use the X. So in our chart, we've talked about the chart area and the plot area. Some of the details around our chart, and let's maybe bring this down a little bit. This is our chart title. And again, notice how when I hover over it, I have the chart title there. And if I click on it, I can go up to my formula bar and type new stuff in there. And if I just go new and hit my enter key, well, now I've updated my chart title. So I'm just going to undo that. So I have my chart title. I have my horizontal axis title. So you can see here again, I'm hovering over it, horizontal or category axis title. Category in this case, because we have categories of computer jobs. Same type of thing. I can click on it. I could maybe double click inside it and just take, say, out the word job. And let's just go 
click off it. And now I've updated that access title. I'm going to undo it so it comes back. And I did a couple of things, so I need to undo a few things. <clears throat> so there's my job title again. And I might have to, oops, escape. Let's undo some things here. Redo. Let's come back. Sorry about that. I can come here. And I just had a little box around it to try to see the title a little bit better. <clears throat> we'll just leave it like that for now. If I come over here, there's my vertical value access title, same type of thing. I can click on it and change it in the top here. So I can go number of jobs. Okay, so now I've updated it. I then have, <clears throat> and these are called axis titles. Okay, so horizontal category, vertical value, and the value corresponds to because it has a number. Keep in mind that you could have the categorical axis as a vertical one and the value axis as the horizontal one. So again, we have just some headings here, some help for us. Horizontal in this case is category, vertical in this case is value. We then have our data bars. So here's our data series. And you notice when I click on one of the bars, all of the bars are being selected. And then if I click on the actual numbers above it, those are my data labels. Now, as far as the data series goes, we could have say a, um, a clustered column chart where we have maybe subcategories within the computer system analysts and within the database administrators, et cetera. We only have one series. So that's why when I hover over this bar, it's saying these are just the computer systems analysts. And what's the value? 600500. A couple of other features that we have in our chart. We have our legend. So here's our series one legend entry. It's not really uh, required in this case because we don't have um, multiple categories within, say, a computer job in this particular instance. But some of the graphs we'll look at will have that. Other things we can look at, we can look at the grid lines. So if I hover over here, that horizontal line is the vertical value axis major grid line. So it's the grid line that goes with the vertical axis and it's major because it's in these major cuts. And we can change things to alter those. Another feature of charts, and you'll see as soon as I select a chart, I get these three icons here. And the first icon, will be our different chart elements. <coughs> and we can select them or deselect them as we like. So I could maybe get rid of the data labels. I can bring them back and put them in a different spot. Okay. Or I could just again get rid of them. I'll bring them back and I'll leave them at the out. The default is this outside end here. We could put a data table. See how it puts the actual data below it. Enter it. Uh, deselect it, I should say. With our grid lines, we can see that we have primary, major, horizontal. Let's take a look at primary, major, vertical. So notice I'm hovering over it. I haven't selected it yet. And you can see these vertical lines. Primary, minor, horizontal now gives the smaller lines between the horizontal ones. And then primary, minor, vertical. If I pick the major vertical, and then hover over the primary minor vertical, you can now see sublines in between the major ones. And if I go more options, it helps me with this task pane again. And again, you'll see I have the drop down list. I could pick which one I want. I'm currently on the vertical value access major grid lines. And I could say maybe, okay, you know what? I want those to be really thick lines. Let's put them three point. And you can see how these ones have darkened up. I'll just exit out of that. Other elements we have, we could put in a trend line. Now that doesn't make sense in this particular data set, but again, different options that we might have available to us with these little sub arrow, sub menu arrows, linear, exponential, etc. And again, clicking more options gives you the task pane. The next icon in this little three icon set is our style and color options. So we could come here and pick a style. And if I hover over one, notice how it gives it a name, style two. 
and I can cursor down here and there's style nine. If I go to colors, I have my color palettes. And if I hover over a particular palette, it shows that this particular one is colorful palette two. If I come down here, that's colorful palette four. If I come down here, we have monochromatic four. And notice how when I hover over it, it updates my chart. I can maybe come down here and look at the pink one blue one here. So you can see sort of some changes happen. And it would be good practice to pick your style and color before you start doing any individual formatting. Because if I, I already have some individual formatting on this sheet, and if I pick a color, it will override some of my custom formats. And we'll just exit out of that. And then the last thing we can do is we can filter our charts and maybe I don't want to see all jobs. So I'm going to select all and then I'll just bring up the computer software and information. And when I do that, I have to always hit apply. Now you can see that there's only three categories are included. If I come back to my filter and select all of them again, again, remember you have to hit apply and now all of them are selected. And if I come here to select data, it opens up a select data source window. And again, I could do the filtering inside there also. Okay. And we could switch rows and columns. Let's just see what happens if I do that. And if we go okay, well, nothing really changed in this one. We got a different legend because now our job title is here and we don't have any names there. So let's come back up to our filter. Let's go back up to our select data and let's switch it back so that it looks like we did before. We're going to play a little bit with this window, but not a lot. Um, if you go on to more advanced Excel, you will find that you'll be doing some different things in the charting area. But for our purposes, we just wanna create some basic ones and do some basic formatting. So let's go okay. Um, I also want to take off, I had put a linear trend line, so I just want to get rid of that. So we come back to close to what it was before. Now in our, uh, there we go. I want to show the tabs and ribbons. In our tabs and ribbons, if we take a look and select our chart, we'll notice that on our tabs, we get chart tools with design and format. And if I click on the design, I can see some of the same features that I accessed through these three icons. So I have a style that I could pick. I could come up here and again, hover over a style to see if that's one I like. I could come he over here and take a look at colors again, and I could see the change in colors in that way. I can go to a quick layout and maybe see, you know, what are some different options that Excel is thinking makes sense with, data set, with this data set. And then I also can go to my chart elements from this icon on the far left. So you have the option that you can use your chart elements here and all the different options here, or you can use the little quick icons on the side. We also have the switch row and column. We have the select data, which again opens up that data window. So I'm just gonna cancel it. We could change our chart type. Maybe I don't like the one I have. Maybe I want to go to a bar chart. So I pick a bar chart and again, it gives me some different options. And then we have the switch row and column again that we saw before. Under the format, you have a number of different things here. Again, we have to be very careful for what we actually have selected. So you can see here on the far left that I have my chart area is the chart element that is currently selected. So you can see the handle is all around it. If I come here into my plot area, you can see how that chart element now refers just to the plot area. Be careful when you're doing customized uh, formatting for the different aspects of your chart, because if you then go and try to do a color or style change, your custom formatting might not be maintained. Okay. Uh, we have different alignment. We have different sizing here. Now the sizing is not showing up because I have my chart in its own sheet 
with no grid lines behind it. So that's a brief overview of some of the different elements of the chart that we might want to edit or alter. Uh, I just noticed the last one here I forgot. In addition to our vertical value axis, we also have the option of setting display units. So we can see here that these numbers on the vertical axis go from 0 to 140. But that's not the real scale. The scale is 140 times 10,000. So this is actually 1.4 million. We might want to use this, this display units, and again, vertical value access display units label, big name for that one. We might want to use this when we do have very large numbers. Okay, so that's the display units label. And again, we could alter it if we wanted to. We're going to take a look at accessing that and changing the units to whatever unit we like. So let's go back to our data set. And we're going to create these first three charts. So let's take a look. When I click on my column chart, you can see what data was selected from A6 to B12. And again, notice the titles were not selected. So let's try and reproduce this chart and let's put it in a different sheet. And let's take a look at some of the different formatting we can do. And you can see here, there's your 1.4 million that I was talking about. So I'm going to click off it. I'm going to highlight my data. And I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to pick recommended charts. And it comes up with different charts for me to pick from. I'm just going to hover over the second one. I say well, that one sort of looks pretty nice. Any other ones below here? Hmm. I know I want a column. So are there any other column ones that look decent? No, this one looks maybe the best, the clustered column. So we can just go OK. Notice how it does put the chart in the same spreadsheet as my data set. Now, typically, you won't want to have your chart in the same spreadsheet. You can if you want, but it's usually better practice to put it in a different sheet. So let's take a look at moving our chart. We're going to move it to somewhere within the sheet, and then we're going to move it to its own sheet. So I can click my chart. I can go to Control X to delete it, and I can come up here to cell I2 and go control V. And now see how my chart, the top left hand side, is right in the corner of my cell that I selected I2. As I mentioned, though, I don't want it there. So I'm going to have my chart selected. I'm going to come up to my chart tools, click on the design, and I'm going to move my chart. So I'm going to pick move chart. I'm going to say put it in a new sheet. And we'll call that sheet, we'll just call it column chart. And when I click OK, notice where my column chart sheet was placed. It's placed right in front of my data set job outlook HOE. Now we have the option where we can add or delete or um, format different features that we like. So let's maybe take a look at the styles. You can see that they're all this basic gray. So let's maybe leave that alone for a minute. Let's take a look at the color styles and let's see if we can different palettes here. Let's maybe let's do the colorful palette three. OK, just as an, an option. <clears throat> Notice when I pick a color palette, my chart styles also change. OK, let's take a look at this chart style eight. So there's my eight. So notice how in chart style eight, my plot area has a different formatting than my chart area. If I double click on my chart area, and if I pick a fill, we want to fill here, we're going to pick a gradient fill. And I could pick a gradient fill and let's maybe make it preset light gray. Okay, or if I want green, or let's maybe make it darker. Well, let's stick with the light gradient accent three. And when I do that, now you can see how the chart area behind the plot area has turned into this light gray or light, light beige. Let's take a look at the plot area. So again, notice how my task pane updates to format plot area. Let's put a textured fill in there. And let's put a, let's pick one down here and let's maybe pick something a little paler. So let's go white marble. 
Okay, now that's not very nice. Okay, but I just wanted to show you how you could put a text here. Let's maybe try and pick something a little less onerous. Let's try newsprint. Oh, that's pretty ugly, isn't it? Uh, let's maybe look. Uh, let's just undo that fill. So let's go undo and undo. Okay, and now we're back to where I was before with the pale gray and the, the, the basic, the look. All right, <clears throat> so just be careful. Make sure you're clicking on things that you want to be able to change. Let's take a look at the little plus for the chart elements and let's add some titles and let's add the primary horizontal and primary vertical. So we can see here now we have our axis titles. We can click on one of them. We can come up to our formula bar and we can put in number of jobs and enter and that's been highlighted. Now say I wanted that to show up in bold. I could come up to my whole home, pa um, home tab. Now there's my bold and oh, I want bold on actually and let's make it size 12. Okay, to make the read readability a bit better. Let's come over to the axis title. Let's go to our formula bar and let's just put in job title. And again, let's make that size 12, just so they pop a little bit better. We can do a similar type thing to both the vertical value and the horizontal category axes. Let's maybe go to the horizontal category and let's just change it to italic and bold. And then for the vertical, let's again make that bold and we'll put the size of that as 10. Okay, and maybe since that's 10, let's do this one 10 also just to be consistent. Okay, so different little things that we can do to improve the readability of our graphs. Now let's also add our data labels. So we'll come to our chart elements again and we'll go data labels and let's go to the options here. There they are in the center of the bars, inside end, inside base, outside end, there's a data call out, and then we have more options. And again, remember the more options opens the dial, uh, the task pane. We have the same options here. Let's go oh, outside end as the default. Let's go back to center. No, I don't like that. Let's go outside end. And if we come down here to the number, open up the little sub menu come to the number and we can see here that we have the category as general. So maybe I want it to be a currency. So now we have a currency. Now it's not currency. So I'm gonna just bring it back to general, okay? And we could have special coding that we liked. Typically we don't play this with this too, too much for the um, values, unless maybe we have decimal values or percentages that we want to say different, different number of decimals. So let's get out of there. Let's take a look at maybe we want to highlight one of the particular bars. Maybe I'm trying to highlight database administrators. So again, I click on one of the bars. All of them are selected. I click on the bar I'm interested in again a second time. And now I have just that bar. And if I double click on that bar, then the format data point for that single bar comes up. And now let's put a fill on that and let's just put a solid fill and let's make it maybe, let's make it some greenish color. Let's pick this green here. So you can see here now, <clears throat> I have that maybe highlighted in some special way. And again, maybe if I wanna highlight that specifically, I can maybe come here and do some stuff with the formatting of it. Let's see, I don't think it allows us to do that. If I go plus, and data labels and data call out. Yeah, I can do it that way. I couldn't find it through the task pane. So maybe I'm trying to highlight that quite nicely. So I change the type of data label. So it has the name and the number. If I click on, double click on it again, I can see here that I have some label options. Maybe I don't want the value. Maybe I keep the value leader line, let's leave that. And it's specifying the current label. So it's cloning the different examples there. So just different little things that we could use to highlight. Let's take a look. 
at our vertical axis. So again, we can see here that I've got my vertical axis selected. If I double click it, my format axis task pane comes up. So we can see here that I can set the bounds, minimum and maximum. I can set the major units, the major and minor units. I can set where the horizontal axis crosses. So I could make it zero or I could change the actual value. And I have also the display units. So let's change the bounds. From now it's from zero to 1.4 million. And my chart seems to take up most of my plot area. So that's pretty good. But let's see what happens if I change this to 1.6. So let's change the four to a six and navigate out. See how now my data doesn't take up the entire plot area. So this is the one of the things that you can change to affect that. So let's do 1.3 and see what happens. Well, now maybe it's taking up too much as far as this software developers is. So let's go back to the 1.4, okay? And notice how when I set the max, the maximum, the minimum also set. So this one's on auto and this I can reset to what Excel thinks is the best option. For the major units, we can see that we're going up by 200,000 at a time. So that's my major unit. And the minor unit would be 40,000. If I change the 200,000 to 500,000, you can see how now my major unit has switched. And maybe I'll change my minor unit to, I guess we'll leave it at 100,000 because that's the auto. But maybe I'll want to then add some grid lines just so we can see them. And let's do the primary minor horizontal. Okay. And oops, it seems it's already there. I guess it's because of my formatting here in my plot area, we're not seeing it. So let's do this. Oop, let's come back to our axes and let's go to the tick marks. And let's pick a minor type and let's go outside. Okay. And again, it's not really showing it. So I'm going to click on my plot area here and I'm going to say no fill. Okay. And I'm actually going to take this away too from my chart area. No fill so that we can see things. Oh, now you can see them a little better. So now you should be able to see that we have minor little lines outside and then the major are across. So if I come back to this and let's change this to reset it, so let it automatically do it. So now you can see the, again, the minor tick marks and the major ones. And let's see, let's play around major type. Let's take a look at labels. We can move the labels around. We could put them high. So we can put them up on the high here. We can put them on the low. Default is typically just next to the axis. If you wanted to, you could really put none. Since you have the actual values on each of the bars, you could take away the axis completely. But you know, that would be a personal preference. I'll just leave them on the next to the axis. And then the number down here, again, we can do some category as far as formatting. You know, I could change it into a percentage or something else if I wanted. But let's take a look at the display units. So coming back up here, let's collapse these tick marks, labels, and numbers. And let's take a look at the display units. And let's go thousands. So notice how the 1.4 million has been now switched to 1,400, but that's the thousands. If I don't want the word there, I could take off the show display. Now that's sort of bad practice because you'd really want somebody to be able to read your graph properly. So I would suggest keep it on. But another way we could do this is to put in a value like, uh, let's put 10,000, okay? So now we have whatever value we see here, the reader knows that they have to multiply that by 10,000. Okay. So again, just different little things that you can use to um, improve the readability of your graph. Let's just give this a title and let's call it column.
chart. Okay, and if I decide I don't like that, again, I can select it and go in my formula bar or see how my cursor is actually inside it. Now I can change this and maybe put, maybe I want graph instead of chart. Okay, and I can cursor within, you know, just move my cursor to wherever I want to be. I can highlight all of it or I can select it and get my little moving so I could move it where I wanted to. I'm just going to undo to leave it centered on my graph and in my top margin. So there's an example of our first chart, the column chart, and we, we did some different formatting. Let's do the same thing for our bar chart. So we'll just highlight the same data set. We'll do the quick analysis icon this time around, and we'll go to charts and we'll pick clustered bar. And we can see how, yep, that looks very close to the one I have already. So we've got our clustered, our, our bar chart. Let's move it to its own sheet. So let's put it into a new sheet and just title it bar chart. And again, notice how the sheet gets put before my data set. Same type of thing here. Now we can go ahead and add our chart elements, whichever ones we like. We can cha change the style or color, or we can take a look at formatting. We could also, let's take a look at an interesting feature here. Maybe we want our vertical axis instead of being in this order. Let's double click on that axis and let's say, okay, well, we don't wanna change the fill. We're not gonna change the border. We're not gonna do any of these fancy effects. So let's take a look at size and properties. Now you might have noticed, I said, let's change the vertical um, category axis. But what do I have currently selected in my task pane? Well, I have the chart area, okay? So this is where, as I said before, be very careful where you have clicked or double clicked because you know you might go ahead and start doing things and go, wait a minute, I can't find what I want. Well, it's because I have the wrong thing selected. So I recognize that, I come over, now I have my format axes and we can see here's the axes. So let's take a look again, fill or line, fancy formatting. We have some different alignment we can use, but let's take a look at the access options. So again, we could use some different options here. And this is the one I wanted to look at, categories in reverse order. So we have network at the start and computer network on the bottom. When we click on categories in reverse order, notice how computer networks has gone to the top and network system admin is on the bottom, okay? So that's something that uh, I know that you need to do this as part of one of your assignments. So that's where you would find it. You would click on your category list, come to your format axes and put your categories in reverse order. I'll just put it back <clears throat> to what it was before. So now we have the network back at the top and the computer network architects back at the bottom. Let's take a look at, instead of using the task pane and the quick little icons, let's use our design tab under chart tools. And let's take a look at add chart elements. Now, again, especially with bars, it's uh, bars or columns, it is good practice to add your data labels. So I just want to show you that it looks a little differently when we do it through the add element, add chart element icon. So here we can see you know, we can sort of hover over them and we can see how they look. And as I said, outside end is typically a very common one that's used. Uh, what else could we do here? Let's take a look here. Let's maybe add some grid lines. So let's do in this particular case, we don't want major horizontal, major vertical, primary minor horizontal. That's not gonna help us read it, but maybe this one will. So this one has a combination of primary minor vertical and primary major vertical. So you can see here that if I sort of take my, my mouse off this little window, this one is highlighted, okay? See how it's grayed the little, the little graph? That means those axes, those grid lines are on. And then if I want the primary minor vertical, if I come back to my grid lines, now notice how both of these are grayed. 
So a difference between how we'd see it in the ag chart element, or if we came over here to the grid lines, the grid lines you can actually see which boxes are selected. So just, you know, slightly different way. Let me go back to my chart, my design. Here's my chart elements. There's my grid line. Okay, sorry, there's my grid lines. And again, I could deselect it if I don't want it there. One of the frustrating things that people sometimes feel about using the add chart element is that when you select something, it closes the window again. Whereas when you come over here, I can go to my grid lines and I can select and deselect, but that still little selection box window stays open. So personal preference for how you like to do things. And again, we could add different features if we liked. We could add our axis titles and then sell, say what we wanted to do with them. We could then format our axis titles if we like. We can change the style or color and then the filtering. And notice the style and color. So here's the style. We're currently on style one. And we can see up here in our chart tools design styles area, there's our style one. So they match up. Okay. All right. Let's try our next graph. So let's go back to our data and let's try and do the pie chart. So in my pie chart here, you can see how the data selected has from job title all the way down to, so A5 to B12. Now is job title really a data point that we want shown? Well, no, because these are the titles underneath it. So we'd really want to bring that down. And if I bring it down, notice what happened to my graph. So I'm gonna undo that. It's currently selected. And we have job title is one of my pieces of the pie. I don't want it there, so I can take that little square arrow, drag it down, and now it's not selected anymore, and job title goes away. So if you do sort of make an error with a selection, you can either, you know, select off it and reselect it, or you can actually move, you know, if we change this one up here, we can see how now we have fewer pieces of the pie. Okay, so a little few little tips and tricks there. So let's do the same thing. Let's highlight these options here <coughs> and let's make a pie chart. So again, let's go quick analysis, charts, and pick just a pie chart. And then we'll do the same thing, move our chart to a new sheet and we'll just call it pie chart. Now in our pie chart, we have again, different options that we can do. So we have our chart title, we have our chart area, we have our pie, pieces. And if I click on one of them, all the pieces are selected. If I click again on a, a different one, we now have just a single piece. If I'm out here, I come into my chart and I want this gray one, I can just double click. But I now have to be careful because, okay, let me do that again. So let me get out of here. So let's not even select the chart. Let's come to this piece, double click. What happens when I double click? Well, it has the all the pie and the chart connected. I can double click again, and then I have just that gray piece of the pie. So again, you just need to be careful with your clicking, your double clicking, you know, just slow yourself down and take some time to try and figure out what it is you have actually selected. And a good way to check that is to come into either the format under chart tools where you will see what you have selected, or if you have your task pane open, you'll have what you have selected over here. And again, if it's the wrong thing selected, you can come here, sorry, come down here and switch to which area you want to actually format, okay? So just be careful, especially in pie charts, that can be a real pain. We do have a legend down here. So let's actually take a look at our chart. Let's get rid of this task pane and let's take a look at the legend. So the legend tells us how to read the chart and we can put it on the right, on the top, on the left, and it's currently on the bottom. And again, more options brings up our task pane. We can put some fancy formatting or we can put some fill and border around it. Maybe let's put a, just a solid line around our legend. And we can see now I have a solid line around my legend. 
Again, good practice, especially with any type of chart, is to add our data labels. So again, let's come here. Let's do our, let's go outside end, okay? And before we do that, let's go more options. Because one of the things that's really fancy that we can do with uh, pie charts <coughs> is we can leave it at the best fit. We can go outside end. We can actually change our labeling options. So I can give it the category name. So now we can see that this is computer network architects with the actual number, which sort of defeats the purpose of having the legend, but maybe it makes it a little more readable. So maybe I'd want that, but get rid of my legend. I can take that away. I can put the actual value. I can also say, give me a percentage. Okay, so now we have both values there. We can also add a legend key. Now, this is good and bad in some respects because, you know, we have this teeny tiny little sort of amber square here representing this particular piece of the pie. And we have the legend down here shows us again the different pieces of the pie. Sometimes what I find a lot of people like what they like to do, get rid of the key, put the category name there, get rid of the legend. And then they say that makes it a little more readable, okay? Let's come back here to our data labels. So let's, we don't want the shape, we want this. We want our plot area. Oh, that's down here. So let's maybe do that before I go back to the data labels. So here we can do the same thing we did before. We can format the chart area or we can format the plot area. Let's just put a very, uh, let's go not border, let's put a fill. Let's put a solid fill and let's increase the transparency here. So see how we can sort of get a little fancy. Let's maybe bring it up to 75% transparency, okay? So if I wanted to, I could actually put a little fill on the plot area. You don't tend to see them for um, pie charts. So I just wanted to show you how to do that though. I'm gonna get rid of it because I don't like it, <laughs> okay? All right. Let's come back to our data labels. So again, format data labels and again, fill in border effects, sizing, we can change the sizing, we can change the alignment, we can change margins for different things. And then our label options, like we saw before, where we can pick different values here. If we pick series name, see how it adds to the category name, the series name. So let's get rid of that. The value from the cell, well, we'd have to actually have some data selected. So let's cancel that. <coughs> but we could actually refer to the actual cell in the data set if we wanted to. And uh, separator, the comma is fine. And we'll just leave the number as general. Okay. And maybe, no, we'll just leave that the way it is. Okay, let's do one last thing. Let's take a look at computer programmers. So I'm going to double click. I have all the pieces. I'm going to click that one again. Now I just have the computer programmers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to highlight that piece of the pie by giving it a point explosion. So we'll go up here and see how when I increase this percentage, the piece of my pie that I'm holding is coming out. Okay, so I can pull it out. I can also sort of move it around. I can pull it out further. And notice when I manually pulled it, it actually increased the percentage. I don't want it that far out. I just want it out a little bit. So I can either do it using the up and down arrows or I can manually move it. So a couple of different little things with pie charts. Notice how we don't have a vertical or horizontal axis in this case. We just have the data labels and the chart title. And again, if you wanted it, you could have the legend. If you wanted, you could maybe do some filtering and only look at certain pieces of the pie. Be careful with that though, because as soon as you drop a certain piece of the pie, notice how computer network architects are 6%. If we say drop the, let's drop the software developers and apply it, notice how that percentage changed now, okay? So you don't wanna change percentages. So let's bring that back. So that's one thing, you don't tend to do a lot of filtering, if at all, for a pie chart. 
Let's take a look at one more thing with uh, pie charts and where is it? So here's our sheet here, just called pie. Now this time around we have um, some fruit sales in the first quarter, so January, February, and March. And maybe we want to highlight or plot January to February to March. And say maybe somebody said, well, I'd like pie charts of this. So let's go insert and let's pick our pie charts and just our 2D pie chart. And notice how it only picked up the January, okay? So even though I have everything selected, it only picked up my January values. One of the limitations of pie charts is that we can't do a series. If I did want a series of this, then I'd have to highlight my fruit, go control, highlight the February down, insert pie chart, come up here, notice how it does pick up my February heading, and now I can compare January to February. I could do the same thing, highlight my fruit, control, highlight the March column. So notice how we are now highlighting a heading. With headings, uh, they work nicely in um, pie charts and in another type of chart we'll see in a minute. We'll go, notice we don't have though, when I have a selection that are not adjacent cells, I don't have that quick analysis icon. So notice how if I pick this one, I get the quick analysis icon. But if I pick the fruit, and go control and pick March values, I don't get that. So now I have to go into my insert and pick my charts and we'll just go and there's our March one. So an important aspect for pie charts is that if you wanna do a series, you can't do it all in one. You have to do them individually. Now, if I did select all my data and I went into uh, the quick analysis tool and charts, notice how we have a clustered column. Okay, so maybe that's something, something that we wanna do. So let's pick that. Again, we could have selected all our data, insert and come up to column and picked clustered column and taken a look at it. Pick clustered bar, um, bar chart and take a look at that. So again, different ways of doing things. So just remember, you know, there's multiple ways to find stuff. So let's highlight our data. Let's go to the quick analysis. Let's go to the charts and clustered column. And this is a nice way of looking at data that has series in it. So I'm just gonna go control X. I'm gonna come up to G2 and go control V. And then I'm gonna come into my chart tools and my format. And here's where we can change the height and width of our chart. So I'm gonna make it a little narrower so we can keep it. So let's keep it at 1.8 and let's change the width to six. So we can change it, you know, the height and width as we prefer. We could also use the little handles, you know, drag it out, drag it up, drag it out, drag it in. I'm just gonna undo so that it looks a little better like it did before. Now notice in our data here, if I click on that first set of bars, well, that's my January data. And if I click on the, the next one, that's February and that's March, okay? And notice here in my formula bar, it's referring to what series, okay? So it's the series from this data. And notice again, when I have this selected, it has the fruit and it has the March. I go over here to the January, it has the fruit and it has January. So that's a nice feature with what we call clustered column charts. Something else we can do with clustered column charts, notice I have the month here and then I have subcategories of the different fruit. Well, if I go back to my chart tools and go into design, now I can go switch row and column. And see switch row and column is going to swap the data over the axis. So when I click on it, 
now instead of months being down here for my legend, I have the fruit down here. So now I have January, but all the different fruits together. And then February, all the fruits, and March, and all the fruits. And again, if I click on the Apple data, well, now I can see Apple, and these are the months that are showing. So I could change that particular <coughs> bar to maybe a slightly different color so that it's easier to read. So I could double click on it. Well, no, I want all of them. I don't want just an individual one. So let me get rid of that. Let's click on this. Let's right click. And when we right click again, remember in Excel, we can come up with different <coughs> sub menus. So let's go format that data series and notice my task pane opens up again. And I'm just going to change that to a solid fill, a lighter color. Let's go this one here, just so that it highlights a bit better. So in addition to selecting a chart, using the options here, or going into the chart tools and design and using the options in the elements or some of the formatting here in the format tab. Don't forget that you can select a chart, right click it, and you'll get a sub menu. And because here, notice how it has, I have the chart area selected. If I come into here, now I have the plot area selected. And when I right clicked it, I get different sub menus. Okay. And then if I come down to here and right click it, Again, I'll get a different sub menu and I could add data labels and notice how since I only had that one set selected that one series that's the apple point for the different months. I only got labels for that one value. If I wanted to add the data labels for everything. Let's deselect it and now we have them for everything. So just keep in mind, you can get a little fancy with stuff. You know, we saw how we could use our data labels. Now I have a label for every bar. I'll get rid of that. Or I can select a particular bar and right click it. Sorry, pick the, uh, the chart element and go data label. I'm going to deselect that again. I can pick that bar, right click it and go add data labels and add the labels that way. So um, one of the challenging aspects of charts is that there's many, many ways of doing things. And you're going to have to basically play and work with things to try and come up with methods that you're comfortable with. Um, they're all accepted, so don't worry about it. A number of the different things I've illustrated today are things that you need to do in your actual assignments. And just so that we can finish off if we come back to our data set. So now we've taken a look at those first three and we've taken a look at a clustered column chart. Next time we're going to take a look at the line chart, the combo chart, and a stacked bar chart.